Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Stay. And I'm Steve Stay. And this is Coloring Bliss and our very first video of 2022. So Happy New Year, everyone, <laughs> and Happy New Product. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all of you, I have been strongly encouraged to take a look at the Castle Arts Color Pencils. This is their latest set, the gold set, but we're going to talk about a lot of Castle Arts stuff because they have been going through an evolution Last yeah. time I looked at Castle Arts was back in 2019 when we looked at their very first set of color pencils. I'm going to show that to you a little bit later here in this video because wow, have they come a long way. They have better tins, they have better packaging like inserts in their pencils, they have multiple lines of pencils, so many different kinds of things to look at in the Castle Arts world. Yeah, they've done a really good job. I'm impressed. Cool. So we have a lot to talk about here in this video today. And my hope is that we can answer the question, should you buy the Castle Arts pencils? And if so, which set should you buy? Mm. So we're going to do an unboxing. <laughs> we're going to do some swatching, some initial testing. I'm going to share my first reactions to all these pencils. And we're really going to break it down into what I think you should buy in the Castle Arts world. So yeah. before we get started, though, I need to tell you about a huge giveaway that we're starting <laughs> today. A huge giveaway. That's what I said. And we meant it. <laughs> now, we're not sponsored by Castle Arts at all. Everything you see today, I have bought with my own money, except for that very first set of pencils from way back in 2019. Everything else I've bought. And we knew they were going to be pretty cool. And so Steve and I decided to spoil one of you. We have a big giveaway open to everyone. And this big stack that Steve just handed me is what one of you will win. First of all, one of you gets the complete set of Castle Gold, 120 pencils, plus there are bonus things in here that you're going to see here in a minute when I do the unboxing. Second, the winner gets the full set of pastel tints that are really hard to get your hands on. <laughs> so 48 pencils here, all pastels. You'll see those here in a little bit. And we got you the metallic set too. So that's 216 color pencils, brand new, beautiful tins, the whole thing. Now we also wanna help you organize the pencils, especially that gold set. You're going to see me here in a minute struggle with um, the gold <laughs> pencils, but we don't want you to struggle. So we have a brand new tritone worksheet book dedicated to the Castle Arts Gold series of pencils and you're going to get that too. That is a total value of $172. So follow the link in the video description to our website where you can find lots of different ways to enter for this giveaway. We're going to start the giveaway on January 5th, 2022. Got to get used to that yeah, new year. And it's going to end on January 26th. 2022 and we'll announce the winner the day after that so on January 27th you can check your email box and see if you are the lucky winner of $172 worth of amazing Castle Arts beauty. <laughs> okay, I'm also excited to announce that I have some freebies to help all of you who have the Castle Arts pencils or decide to buy them. Steve has been working really hard on some free downloadable swatch charts. Links in the video description. So far, all I have in front of me is the metallic pencils and the pastel tint pencils, but Steve's also going to make a free chart for the entire gold series and the soft touch series. Right. Oh! <laughs> uh, the reason I'm so happy for you is that you're going to see me swatching here in a few minutes and it takes a lot of time to write down all these numbers and words and to have Steve give you a shortcut so all you need to do is the fun part, the coloring is amazing. So thank you, Steve. You're welcome. <laughs> so like I said, these are free. Come follow the links in the video description. So the second resource that Steve is currently working on is part of the giveaway and that's that 
tritone worksheet workbook to help you organize all the co the castle art pencils and help you pick your colors quickly and efficiently and with a lot of confidence. So that workbook is in process. That is a huge project for us. We've put all the colors into our color order <laughs> and then we pick light mediums and darks for every color on the color wheel and we just get you so organized you just will be flying with your castle art pencils so you can look forward to that resource and we'll let you know when that's available make sure you're at least a free member over at coloring bliss because as soon as that's available steve will shoot out an email to all of you so you can come and get these resources so we have so much to talk about with castle arts and i think the best and most fun place to begin is with an unboxing and some swatching. So I'm going to send you to Jennifer of yesterday <laughs> and she's going to unbox and show you the beautiful things that are now available from Castle Arts. This is the pastel set and we had kind of a hard time didn't we Steve getting these two? Yeah they were just out of stock for a little while. Yeah so we're excited that we got both and like we said before we're also giving these away a brand new set not this one a brand new one. Right. So I'm going to unbox these let's look at them to go together and I believe it's the same line as the Castle Arts Van Gogh pencils that I have previously shown here on our channel. I will link that video below. So let's unbox and see what we've got. First off, I want to say thank you to Castle Arts for putting all of these tins into a protective cardboard box because my Amazon deliverer guy has been really rough and tumble with a lot of my deliveries. So thanks Castle Art. First impressions, the tins are beautiful. This is some really pretty art. And the first thing Steve said when he saw this was interesting that it's they're really showcasing it being on black. So I think we're going to want to swatch at least the metallic on black as well as on white paper. So let's take a peek inside these two tins. All the colors with their numbers are right here. And it looks like they have a PT, probably for pastel. And we've got our literature here. Lots of literature. Whoa. Okay, we'll look at this one first. This is the pastel pen, pastel tint pencils. Wow, that's a tongue twister. So you get a whole like magazine with ideas and oh, look at that. How to put them together into color schemes, some coloring tips and tricks, the meanings of the color. Interesting, some different techniques to try. This is really well done, lots of hard work. And then here's about the art. That was the art on the tin, I believe, am I right? Mm -hmm. No, that's a different art. So they're walking you through, just like they did in the Van Gogh tin, a piece of art to help you learn how to use their pencils. Oh, and then floral. There's the cover tin right there and how to color that. Very interesting, ooh. That's pretty cool. Oh, and the glossary of terms. Wow, that a lot of work went into yeah, that. Wow. Okay, they've got some join the club. We've got, oh, this is specific to the, the tin art. Oh, look, it's all in bigger. Oh, that's helpful. Very neat. Okay. That's cool. Product range. They do have a lot of neat things um, on their website given us a swatch book, a swatch sheet, but we'll be doing it on our own paper here. And then this one, the color and product guide. Steve's excited to see this one because we're um, thinking of doing some work with these pencils and we need to know how their color system works. Well, that's cool. So I, wow. I thought the pastel tints were part of their original line, but that's they're not. That's what I... They're extra colors. Yeah, so this is an entire set that is above and beyond all these other colors. And here's the metallics that we're going to be looking at, I think. Mm. Wow. Okay, well, I'll hand this to Steve. He can look at it and, and peruse that. And here are the pastel pencils. Well, first thing I always look for is how did they ship? Did they make it okay? We've got one broken tip, but that is all right. Like, like I said, my Amazon guy's been really rough with things. Beautiful. Yeah. So they have elastics to help you lift these out. 
so it looks like we get two trays of colors. Yep. Um, they're just beautiful. I can't wait to swatch them. Let's get swatching. So this is the pencil that came with a broken tip during shipping, so we're going to have a good sample here of my first sharpening, and I'm using my Coom sharpener that my son modified it for me with some really pretty um, stone on the back, but it's just a basic Coom sharpener, so um, just so you know, you hold your pencil still and you move the sharpener around the tip that's the best way to protect it now in their little magazine they have some other tips on how to prevent breakage of the core and one was new to me they said to throw your pencil into the freezer for a little while to get the core nice and solid and hard before sharpening your pencils doesn't seem very practical to me from a day-to-day -day art standpoint, but if you were having trouble with breakage, I guess that would be a good thing to try. Okay, sharpened up really nice and easy. Let's keep swatching. In general, the pencils in the tin are in numerical order, except for when I got down to number 40 hydrangea. That's when things got a little bit confusing and I made a little mistake with the swatching, but otherwise I really enjoyed that they were in numerical order. All right, I'm really excited about this. You guys know I love my bling. We didn't look at the back of the other tin. We'll do that real quick here. Pretty much what you'd expect, a little bit of a blurb on the back and then little swatches. Nothing too exciting on the backs of the tins. Okay, let's see if we can ooh, open that up. Up here they have more of that art, all the colors are listed, and we've got similar literature. That's the same um, one that was in the pastel tin. And now we've got the things specific to metallic. We've got another swatching sheet. And we've got two little leaflets. This one, I, I'm guessing, is going to be very specific to the tin art and how to recreate it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. And then we've got another magazine. This one feels a little smaller than the other one. Again, talks about the pencils themselves and then goes into a whole bunch of ideas about the pencils, how they perform, ways to use them. Ooh, how 12 pencils make 144 colors. So kind of showing you how you can layer to change up the colors and get a ton of colors just from 12 pencils. Okay, ooh, look how neat. It says colors are vivid and blend perfectly. Oh, I can't wait to try them. And some art to try. It's interesting to me that everything ooh. they're showing is on black or dark, yet the swatch page they give you is white. They should have given you a dark one. Yeah, a black swatch chart would have been really handy. But we'll swatch them on black and white and see how they play out. My biggest question here is, will these pencils shine, like with a metallic sheen? That's going to be really interesting. Okay, here's the first layer of colors. Again, we've got elastics on the trays to help you pull them in and out. Both of these tins, the trays have been very snug, which is good for shipping, but not so good for quickly accessing. We'll see how I feel about it as we're swatching. No broken tips, so they made it. Okay, I'm looking to see any other differences. It says metallic on it, and the MT for metallic. So that's what we have for the pencils. Okay, let's swatch these. First we'll swatch them on white, and then we'll swatch them on black. Now, unlike the pastel tint pencils, the metallic pencils are not in numeric order, and it looks like 
um, the numbers are just sort of jumping all around. So maybe as we're swatching, we'll figure out a uh, logic to it. I'm going to follow the list on the inside of the tin, and that matches the way the pencils were packed. So let's swatch them in that order. I'm swatching the final metallic pencil onto black, and I want to mention a few things that I've learned so far. Whatever formula they're using here in the metallics is much more crummy than their soft series. I haven't swatched the gold yet to know the difference. Um, the pencils themselves look different, but we'll compare all of the different lines in a little bit here, the bodies and stuff. But some of them are off-centered. It's not dramatic but there are more off-centered issues. And because of the formula they're using here, these feel a lot scratchier, and I think it's because I've added glitter. Let's move this in the light, and you can see the, I'll bring it up close first, and hopefully you can see the crumb issues like on this one here. There's just um, more crumbs than I like in a standard colored pencil. Um, but I think it's the formula. So now if we move it in the light, hopefully we can catch the light and you can see some of the sparkly glitters. So for instance, number 38 has some of that glitter in it. I'll bring it up really close and move it in the light and hopefully you can see that. Not all of them have the glitter. Some of them I think they were going for more of a metallic sheen and some of them they added that glitter in. In person, there is a shine on these pencils, so um, I can say that they are metallic. Let me grab the white swatches here. Okay, so from this line down, these are the metallic swatches. Let me move them in the light, and like, see this one here has a nice metallic sheen to it. Um, and again, you can see the crumb issue. I didn't um, clean off this page at all yet so that you could see all the crumbs. And it did cause some smearing just as I was doing the swatching. So I thought that was frustrating to work with them. But um, if you get these and you color with them, just be aware of the smearing issue and the crumbs and be careful as you work with it. That Jasper has a nice shine to it. Some of them are definitely are paying off better with the shine than others. And let me put them side by side for you so you can see all the metallic colors on both black and white. This is their gold line, and Steve and I sprung for the set that had the case. So we'll be looking at both the pencils and the case that it came in. You can get this entire set in a tin instead of this nice um, canvas type case. Depends on how much you want to spend and what's available. I think at the time this was the only option available. They didn't have the tins ready to be purchased yet. So let's take the plastic off and see how it looks. All right, it's got this gorgeous sleeve. Such pretty art on here. Slide this off. Um, the sleeve has just the pretty art, um, some blurbs about the pencils, and some little swatches. And it's 120 colors. Let's take a look at this case. Um, I see a, a little bit of a sewing error here. Hopefully it won't affect the structure of the bag. Okay. Ooh, and that zipper looks like it's got a bit of a catch on it. Come on. I'll just run over it a couple times to help the teeth reset. Ooh, seemed to run good. Ooh, that's good. All right. Whoa, what is going on here? We got stuff, you guys. Look at this. We got beige portrait paper, Bristol board paper. So we've got the different weights, all the same size. White cartridge paper, not familiar with that phrase. And black paper. 
Awesome. So there's 20 sheets in each of these little pads. Did did we know this was coming, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> oh, man, this is their little magazine. Okay, let's see. We've also got another swatch sheet, which is nice, but we won't be using that. <laughs> um, and that's that same guide that we looked at before. Okay, and then two big... Um, inserts here. One's like a foldable map kind and this is their magazine. Let's take a peek at the big one here. Let's see what we've got. Oh wow. Several pieces of art to try. Wow, that's really neat. Shows you all the colors to use and the progress you'll make as you work on it. Wow. Okay, on, on the other side, this looks familiar from the other inserts, but over here, we've got some information, premium oil-based, lots of other products, and they've got two big squares where they show their colors. These colors make up the 72-piece gold color pencil. I thought we got the 120. Yeah. 120. Okay, good. That scared me for a second. <laughs> okay. Um, and just like a map, it's a little tricky to fold back up. All right, this is the magazine. Let's take a peek inside here, showing you how the pencils are made. It'll be interesting. I'll do some reading and comparing and let you know if this is the same structure as the soft series. Lots of tips again on how to take care of, how to hold, how to pick color schemes. Again, lots of work has gone into this. How to create shadows and highlights, different coloring techniques. Oh, and here's how the, to make 12 pencils into 144 again. Lots of tips and tricks here. Wow, again, a lot of work has been put into this. Very neat. Okay, let's look at the pencils. So the way this case works is it's one large zipper and then they have these um, leaves for all of the different pencils. So we'll have to kind of pay attention to the way they've grouped them. Is there some sort of logic? But these pencils, you guys, look, it's got gold end cap, it says gold, there's a gold band. I, I wonder if that's a bigger core. I need to do some reading. We'll do some reading here in a minute. <laughs> but here is your first peek at all the colors. It's a pretty pencil, don't you think, Steve? Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Really pretty. You said something about it being soft touch, too. Soft touch? Like the... I thought it was referring to the way the pencil felt, the outside of it. Hmm. Feels, I don't know. Okay, let's um, swatch these out onto white, and then I will do some reading, comparing of all the specs, and we'll be back to talk about the differences between the soft and the gold and my first impressions. I'm getting ready here to swatch the Castle Art Gold, and I was looking at chart they gave me and it's not in the same order as the pencils are here in the case so again I'm going to follow the order that is here in the case. Um, the other thing I noticed was sadly my chart here if I did want to use this it has a bunch of toner or something smeared across it so that would have been um, a disadvantage swatching on top of that but yeah, so I'll have to go through and read each pencil and put their number and name on my swatch chart, and then we'll begin swatching. Just came across a poor pencil that looks like it's got a little beat up during manufacturing. There's been a few pencils with some paint smears and little issues like this, but this is by far the most beat up of them. Poor little Dove Gray. 
About a third of the way into writing all these names onto my swatch chart, I started to really regret my decision to swatch them as they came in the case. Not really sure why they're organized the way they are. Maybe as I color them out, I'll figure that out. Overall, I must say I'm quite surprised by the gold line. They feel really good. There are some with some scratchy issues, but nothing that makes me feel like I don't want to color with them. Also, there are some crumbs coming off of these pencils, but it's not an unreasonable amount, so I'm okay with it. Before I clean this page off with my brush, I just wanted to show you that crumb issue I was talking about. You can see it most on this really dark ivory black or some of the other dark colors, like right here, there's some crumbs. But like I said, not too many. For this next test, I thought I would try out some of this Picasso Arts paper. So let's break into these packages. First up, we have the beige portrait paper sketch pad. And it's just beautiful. The weight isn't too heavy, and there is a slight texture, but nothing too aggressive. Okay. Then here we have the Bristol board paper. This, I think, is the heaviest weight of the papers that I received. Again, a little bit of texture on it. Should be good for color pencils. Next up, we have the white cartridge paper. This is, um, a, feels lighter weight, let's see. Yeah, this is 130 GSM, and this one was 250 GSM. Again, it's got some texture to it. Finally, we have the black paper, which is 135 GSM. A little smoother, but the back side feels a little bit more rough, so you probably have a couple options of how to use that paper. Okay, here you can see all four and their overall colors. This one here has a bit of a more ivory payoff. This one's a much cooler colored paper. All right, let's see how these papers do. So before I finish up my swatching here, there's one more thing I want to see, and that's how the colors of the pencils between the two sets, the soft and the gold series, how do their colors compare? I know Castle Arts has a color family, so let's do a few comparisons and see how that looks. I just finished swatching those five colors on four different papers. And what we're doing here is comparing the soft series to the gold series, their same colors. So same 07271, like that, okay? So does their colors translate from one series to the next? I can only imagine how difficult this is. So anyway, I did make one mistake over here with the teal green. Those two colors should be swapped. I made a note of that. So Steve just came over. First thing I want to note is the crumb issue between the soft and the gold is pretty equal. So if the crumbs are a thing that will make your mind up between either the soft series or the gold series, it's about the same between the two. Um, transparency on the black, you can really see whether the colors are um, opaque or not and remember the this is the um, gold series and this is the soft series teal but there some of them are a little more transparent like this lemon yellow and the titanium white but it kind of jumps back and forth as to which one is really transparent and which one's not so even that's not a deal breaker there if you're going to be coloring on colored backgrounds let's have that same look at this um, more tan paper so you can see the colors on each one now steve you're my color guru 
do the colors on the gold series match the colors on the soft? You know, it's actually pretty good. Um, the teal doesn't. No, the teals are two and different the, and teals. The yellow um, seems to be a little more yellow orange or something on the gold side. Yeah. Let me see the black. I like the gold black a little better. Huh. Me too. Yeah. Overall, it kind of seems. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. I, I, I mean, they're they're. You have to be really nitpicky to not think that they don't match, you know? Right. But that's who we, why you came to us was to be nitpicky. So, yeah. so I would say overall, they did a really good job. Yeah. Um, if you were to just glance at these pages, I think for the most part, you would assume I had colored the same colors twice. But if you take even two. more than a little bit <laughs> or, of a glance... Yeah. Then you start seeing issues. These are two different yellows. These are two different teals. So are they perfect matches? No. Are they decent matches? Yeah. That yeah. would be my... <laughs> um, as we plan out, like, what our favorites, colors for yellow and yellow-orange and orange, that is a different... Right. color here so we would pick maybe lemon yellow in the softs but not in the gold so it may throw off our tritone selections if we decide to go ahead and do that it's very interesting good yeah. way to look at them one more quick thing to look at here are the papers we've got four different papers what do you think steve do you like the papers yeah this one's quite blue this one's a little more warm, this white here. But, um, yeah, this one I don't like. Was it this one? This one's too thin for me for the kind of work I do. And that was this one here, I believe. The white cartridge is probably my least favorite out of the three, out of the four papers. But, yeah, I think I'll be able to find ways to use these papers in my art studio in the future. Yeah, that's fun that they came with those. Yeah. The next thing I'd like to do is compare all the pencils from the different lines and how the bodies differ from a pencil to pencil. Let's start by looking at Castle Gold. So this is their, their premier amazing set, right? So we have some metallic writing. It's dipped on the end, has a gold band here, and I really love the touch of the gold on the end there. It's a matte finish. It reminds me a lot of the Derwent Inktense blue that they have, but this is a much more blue on this pencil here. We have the logo here, Castle Arts, the word gold, so that you know you have the gold pencils in your hand. And then over on this side of the pencil, we have the color name and the color number with the GP that um, signifies that you've got a gold pencil in your hand. It's metallic writing. You guys know I really dislike the metallic writing. But on most of the pencils, they're using nice big blocky sans serif type of print. So it's easier to read than some. But I wish that all pencil manufacturers would stop using gold on the name of the color and the number of the color. Okay, let's take a look at the soft series next. That would be this one right here. So it says soft touch on it instead of gold. And it says castle arts. Now instead of gold writing and a gold band, we have silver and again, metallic. Flip it over and here you can see the color name and the color number. And it's this nice matte black body with a dip on the end, just a plain beautiful dip. Okay, the next one I wanted to show you is the metallic pencils. Now they used the metallic writing as well, which is a little more fitting here because we have a metallic pencil in our hands. It says Castle Arts, metallic, it's got a silver band that is, let's see if it's the same, pretty much the same silver band that is on the Soft Touch series. Um, and then we've got the name of the color here and the number, which also has an MT signifying that this is a metallic pencil. Okay, again, I would just get rid of all the metallic writing. <laughs> 
These two pencils here are from the Pastel Tints line. They're a little different. If you see, they've dipped the entire pencil with the same color so that you know what color you have in your hand. And they've used a matte white print. They do have a really pretty little silver band on it. One problem I had with the white print is, as you can see on their lighter pencils, which in the Pastel Tint set, there's a lot of light colored pencils. That white print is really, really hard to read. Um, yeah, so I don't like this white print on these light bodies, but I love that the pencil is completely dipped in the color. I think that's fantastic. So we have the word Castle Arts Pastel Tint, so you know what you have in your hand, the color name, and number with the PT for Pastel Tint. So for fun, let's look at the very first set I ever got from Castle Art Supplies. This is like their original release here. And let's take a peek at how far they have come with their pencils. It's pretty exciting. And I know when I did my original review, I even mentioned that I was excited about the future of Castle Art Supplies. So this is what their tins used to look like. So this tin is from the very beginning of 2018. That's how old these pencils are. So they used to have a little foam and just one insert. Like I said, they've really upped their game with the way they present the pencils when you open them up. They have these little trays that are really hard to get in and out. And I remember they were talking about fixing the trays back in 2018 and they definitely have. Um, there was 72 colors in this set that I had, and let me grab the vermilion here. Let's see, is this vermilion? Oh, that's right. So these pencils, when they first came out, all they had on them was the words Castle Art Supplies, soft series, they were dipped with the color, but no color name and no color number. And I believe that was the very first huge amount of feedback they got was put color names and numbers on your pencils. <laughs> so they've definitely improved from 2018. They're giving their colorists, their artists, a much better project, a product in better tins. That's pretty cool. Next, I wanted to check the size of all the pencil bodies. It was a little difficult on both their website and on Amazon to figure out what the core size of these pencils are. But I think they're all the same core size at a 3.8 millimeter core. That's my best guess. And if you know different, please comment below. Just using my cheap little device here and roughly checking the width of each of the pencil bodies, they're all about the same. The gold one might be slightly bigger, which I agree, it feels slightly bigger in the hand. But let's take a peek at the core sizes now of all four of these. And I swear that that gold one looks a little bigger. So I know their literature says the gold is at 3.8. I'm wondering if these other lines are more of a 3.6. So I went back and I remeasured each of the cores and the gold is definitely a little bigger than the metallic, the pastel tint and the soft series. So yeah, there's something different here with the gold, a bigger pencil and it feels amazing. Let's talk about feel. All right, I'm going to do a blind feel test. I'm gonna put them all down, not look at which pencil I have, and just color on the paper with each of the pencils. Oh, that one's scratch here. So I'll put it to the left as more scratchy. I've got my eyes shut, just so you know. Then let's try this one. Ooh, that one is smoother. Um, let's try the last one. Oh, that one's scratchy too. Okay, so we have two that are more scratchy and two that are more soft. I'm gonna open my eyes. So the metallic, I expected to be a little scratchy because of the glitter that they've added into some of them. Interesting that the soft one 
came out as one of the scratchy ones and the pastel tint and the gold, which I knew the gold was gonna come out feeling softer, a more smooth, um, silky type feel as you color across the paper. So that's not a surprise. This one though, that was a surprise that I felt he was really scratchy. That's interesting. All right, let's for a minute talk about Castle Art's um, very special sets that they've put together. Like I showed in the other video with their soft touch series of pencils, they've broken it down into color collections that you can collect. Some of them are based on famous artists. Some of them are more purpose-driven like a portrait set. Or of course you can get the full set of the premium soft touch color pencils, which would include all the colors from these different collections. So that was a very fun video. Now these are two standalone collections that are not included in any of the other sets. So if you want to full set syndrome, complete your entire collection of Castle Arts color pencils, you will need to pick up these two tins. Now let's first talk about the metallic set. We swatched all the metallic pencils on both white and black. Let me bring those up. Here are all of those swatches for the Metallic Soft series. We already have looked at these a little bit. What I wanted to do though is compare them to some of my other metallic color pencils. So back in 2019, we did a battle of the metallic color pencils. I'll link that video below if you'd like to go check it out. It was a live video, so it's quite long. In the end, we decided our favorite pencils were the Spectrum Noir Metallics and the Faber-Castell Eco Metallic pencils. These ones, I came across the feeling of them being very creamy, but having a general silver undertone. The Faber-Castell was a harder core pencil. We think it's the same pencils as the Crayola Metallic at the time. Um, but the Faber-Castell was the ones that I, I felt like were the best because the colors were vivid and you still got a shine payoff. So let's look at the Faber-Castell Eco-Metallic Copper, I mean the Eco-Metallic Pencils, compared to the Castle Art Pencils. So, you know, this is almost three years later. Do we have an improvement in metallic pencils? So let's see, we've got a couple we can pull out and do a side-by-side -side comparison. All right, so I picked four from the Castle Arts metallic set and four from the Faber-Castell metallic set and um, tried to get similar colors, but we're not here to really compare color to color. It's more like shine to shine, crumbs to crumbs, that kind of thing, and feel, softness, hardness, all of that. Price-wise, just so you know, the Faber-Castell 12 pencil set, this one right here, is only $7 for the 12, that's about 50 cents per pencil. The Castle Art set is $35 right now on Amazon for the 48, although um, I would watch for sales for that, but as the price stands right now, that means they're 73 cents per pencil. Okay, let's take a look at the crumb issue. If anything, I think Castle Arts won this match. Faber-Castell pencils are so very crummy, just like the Castle Arts, but even more so. So if crumbs are an issue for you, the Castle Art wins that battle. Let me clean off the crumbs and we'll look at the shine. Okay, let's compare shine. One of the reasons we liked the Faber-Castell pencils in the last time we did this was that they had a really nice bright color and not a silvery overall undertone on all the colors. So let's look at the white first. I'll move it back and forth. Comment below, which one do you think wins, Faber-Castell or Castle Arts on the shine? Um, we do have, like I said, a couple glittery type here. It looks like there's a little glitter in the Castle Arts too, but there's more of a glitter effect on the Faber-Castell. So on the white, um, comment if you agree, I think Faber-Castell is a much more metallic shine to it. Let's look at it on the black. Um, <laughs> They look pretty equal on shine, except for maybe the silver. Um, 
They all seem pretty equal on shine on the black. That's pretty interesting. Color, like the deepness and richness of the colors, I still think, at least for the four we picked to compare, I still think Faber-Castell's colors are just really interesting, rich and deep without that overall silvery feel that some metallic pencils get. Now we do have other metallic pencils in my pencil stash. Would you like me to do a follow-up battle of the metallic pencils? Comment below if that's interesting to you. Overall, I think both metallic lines are good. I love the lots of colors here. Um, they both have crumb issues. This is the better price, seven bucks, and you get 12 beautiful colors. But here you get 48 colors with um, some really good metallics and some that fall a little flat. So do I like the Castle Arts metallic set? Yes, but I'm not blown away by it. So we're back and now you have seen all the testing and all the swatching and the unboxing. And now I wanna kinda of give you my final first impressions. And I have a few things that I really still wanna do with the Castle Art pencil. So we're going to talk about that too. Let's look at the swatches first. Steve, you haven't seen these swatches no, yet. No, I haven't. So up here we have the Van Gogh pencils, the 24 that we bought uh, in 2021. Yeah. And now here we are in 2022. This plus these two rolls. This is the pastel tints set. So 48 pencils. What do you think? I'm gonna hold this up to the screen. Whoa, that got really close, sorry. So starting at this line here and down are all the pastel tints. Now this brings me to one of the things I still want to do, and that would be to challenge myself to color an entire coloring page. Here's the second two lines here an entire coloring page only using the pastel tints and see what I can create just with that one set to see if it's a good standalone set or are there big holes in the colors provided. Now I believe the pastel tints is supposed to be a support set. So there's 48 colors here that aren't included in either the gold or the soft touch full set. So if you're still looking to increase your collection of Castle Art pencils, I think this is a really cool set. Yeah, so that means you have the 248 plus the 120, so that's 216 soft touch line yeah. pencils, right? Yeah. Wow. That's a big line of pencils. And these are really interesting colors, very soft colors. And when you work with color pencils, these soft light tints, tints is a color plus white. So the tints are really important to help you get a really strong blend and good contrast in your coloring. So I'm excited about these. Some yeah, of them, really I pretty. don't know, is that really a tint? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Some of, and this one here, I was like, oh, that's kind of a tint. I don't know. Hmm. Some of them, um, yeah, but others are just true, really light, would be great for florals, would be great for portraits. It's really a good set. Now let's look at the metallics. Steve hasn't seen these either. <laughs> so the metallics start right here and it's the rest of the page. And we talked a lot about it in the metallics um, when I was unboxing and testing them. So I'm not gonna spend too much time here. Um, we've already discussed whether I think they are um, beating out our last time when we discussed metallics, which was the Fa Faber-Castell a metallic set. And like I said in my final thoughts there, this is pretty cool to have 48 metallic colors. Some of them are better than others. Here they are again on black so you can see the shine. I wish the shine payoff was a little better in person. The little glittery ones are really neat. Oh, wow. yeah. Um, so I think in person they pay off better than on camera, but yeah, I, I think they're cool And if you're like me and you just you've got full set syndrome and you need all of them <laughs> Then yeah, you need to get these and again This is another thing I would like to do is an entire coloring page using only the metallic set to see how well it does as a standalone set Well, and it's cool having such a wide variety of colors too. Yeah, and the metallics it's, So it's four times as many as what you yeah. get with the Faber Castell. Cool. So if you'd like to see me do two more coloring pages, one with just pastels and one with just metallics, comment below and let me know you're interested in that. 
Now we have two pages of the gold pencils to look at, and this is Steve's first time looking at these as well. One of the things that frustrates me, and I'm so glad you won't go through this, <laughs> is that I went to all the work of writing all these names down in the order that were in the case, and the order is just not good. You've got greens in multiple places, so if I needed to pick a really good green, I'd be flipping all around and in the case and here on the swatch book. So yeah, Steve's swatch chart will hopefully be better for you and save you that frustration. But overall, how do I feel about the colors? Are they well balanced? Do we have lots of reds, yellows? Do we have blues, greens, all the colors that we reach for, violets? Um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful set. And the other thing is, is I liked coloring with them. Every time I was swatching with these versus the soft ones, it was quite a delight. I enjoyed it. And it did give me the feeling that it, they feel a little like polychromos. How much like polychromos? I don't know. So comment below, would you like me to do a head-to-head -head comparison battle between Castle Arts Gold and Faber-Castell polychromos? Is that interesting to you? Because I think we need to do that. <laughs> do they blend better? Do they feel the same? How are their color families? All those things I want to find out between these two sets. So I'm sure you're wondering, do I recommend the gold over the soft line? This is a little tricky because I don't own the entire soft line yet. It's on its way. <laughs> um, so I'll be able to give you a complete answer to that. But my first impressions, the way they feel, the way they color off, their, their strength of color is I'm leaning towards the gold. And because of that, we're going to start our Coloring Bliss resources with the gold set that um, I think it's worth it. I'm really quite impressed. I'm excited about it. Now, is there room for improvement? Of course, there's a few, um, a few problems. One of them is these tins. I struggled with the pastel tints and the metallic tints tins the entire time. The little trays, it's really nice that they have the elastic pull right here, but the trays themselves don't fit correctly in these tins so every time you pull them out you have to wrestle them carefully back into the tin mm -hmm. and that's really frustrating if i were to use these on a day-to-day -day basis i would definitely get them out of this tin and into a case so i could easily access and organize them a little bit better the other place they have a little room for improvement is the off-centered issues. Now, gratefully, there weren't any that were extremely off-centered, but there were a lot that were somewhat off-centered, especially in this line, the soft touch line. Not so many in the gold, more in the soft touch line. So that could be improved slightly as well. And the third thing I think that they could do to improve if they wanted to, and I don't even know if this is possible, and I'm being extremely nitpicky, <laughs> is the color system, the color matching between the two lines, the gold and the soft touch. It's slightly off, like you saw in the, previously here in this video. It's enough off that it makes me a little uncomfortable to say, yes, the colors match from line to line but they're close enough that I think they can get away with it. <laughs> well, and we'll have to see, you know, when we get the 120 in. Yeah, when we so get the full set. So we're comparing 120 to 120. Yeah, not just a few of them. So that will be another really good thing to look at when our new set of soft touch pencils arrive. So Castle Arts, I'm impressed. And I think it's really cool that you have evolved so far from just a baby little company to a company that has amazing customer service, really cool products, and a track record now. That's pretty cool for an art company to have such a good track record. I'm excited to do more with these pencils. Don't forget about the huge giveaway. One of you awesome lucky followers is going to win a ton of products. So make sure you follow the link in the video description. Get your entries in because the giveaway ends on the 26th of January. And if you're watching this video after 26th of January, don't worry because we have giveaways all the time. Just make sure you subscribe and hit that like button so that we know that you like these giveaways and you'll never miss a future giveaway.
Don't forget the little bell too. That helps too. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot about Castle Art Supplies and the little snoring Rose back here. <laughs> she says, I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. <laughs> bye bye everyone. <laughs> She's really snoring. Makes me want to take a nap. <laughs>